I call this look har har cardi har har. I'm gonna keep that too. I'm gonna keep it. I ain't gonna edit, start over, nothing. I'm gonna keep it. Y'all need to know sometimes I'm corny. I'm gonna keep it. Fuck it. I'm gonna keep it. Any hoot. From Hollywood to Soho, we be wearing polo. Knock on is a no no, that's just how we go though. You got it for the low low, it's probably US polo. A Beverly Hills polo, all of that is so so. In the locks and chevrons, cruise navy and lemon. Round floor and wear on, I'm buying what you sell on. Now we pink and melon, tell them about that rest. Greetings, and welcome to another edition of Seamless Style, powered by Politics and Polaroids. I'm your host, Mr. Parker. Episode 134. Episode 134, Southwest P. So I took the name, I took the name of a infamous um, African American figure known as Terry Flannery. And his alias was Southwest T. Today, I'm Southwest P. Because I'm about to be infamous or famous, one or the other, when it comes to Southwestern print. All right. Because this is going to be our first installment of what I would, God willing, knock on wood, presume to be many more episodes featuring the southwestern print all right southwest print uh some people call it navajo print some people call it aztec print i don't think you can go wrong with any of those uh entities as far as the actual name uh indigenous people may have come up with it first uh i don't know i didn't do any research thanks to the president of mexico's bum ass wife i don't care to do any research because now it's just on now it's just up and it's up forever southwestern print uh three rigs today including the ensemble so that means i have at least four pieces of southwestern print and if you've been a, a one of my day oneers, then you know that that's a recent development. I haven't, I've said before, uh, I haven't had, a, I didn't have any Southwestern print. A pair of socks, I think. Um, but it's up. It's up now. It's up. Now, I'm never going to be a, 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 I don't think, I, I don't think if uh, $5 million fell in my lap tomorrow, I'd be a stupid shopper. So uh, to the drug addicts on eBay who are asking four and five hundred dollars for denim and supply Southwestern print cardigans. That's all I got to say to that. You ain't going to get my money. Not 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 that not at that price. It is not going to happen ever, 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 ever. But that said, um, because of Mexico's president's punk ass wife and the fact that now I kind of got the bug, it's up for Southwestern print. It's up for Navajo. It's up for Aztec. All right. Uh, blankets, overshirts, sweaters, cardigans. Um, I will, I will, I wouldn't do a puffer jacket, but a puffer vest. I had my eye on a puffer vest and, um, it, it disappeared off of eBay. I didn't ever see it get sold, but it's just no longer available. It kind of made me sick to my stomach because it was an amazing piece. Um, Western, Western, uh, Western cut at the top. The top was brown leather, about the same color as the Shanley's. And down was a beautiful uh 
orange and cream based Southwestern print. Beautiful puffer vest. Beautiful. And that was a good price. It's a good price too. I should have jumped on it when I saw it instead of wanting to see if I could negotiate. But it happens. That's part of the game. Anywho, three rigs for you. All right. Plus the ensemble I'm wearing. If you follow me on the gram, you've seen that you saw the reel or you've seen the reel that I did with this ensemble. If I do say so myself, very well put together. Um, I did have on dress boots for the reel, but for this episode, I went with the Shanley's tassel loafers, uh, chocolate brown leather. All right. A simple pair of navy blue ribbed socks here. Two piece suit, Glen plaid pattern. All right. Brown based with a little bit of orange in the, in the Glen plaid. Actually, a prominent amount of orange. All right. Uh, but a two piece suit, slim fit, slim fit uh, flannel wool trousers, um, and a uh, slim fit uh, wool waistcoat, flannel wool waistcoat, lapel, uh, lapel, uh, lapels on the waistcoat for that extra that extra oomph for the rustic sheet look all right uh cream cream window pane spread collar dress shirt i did a green match play pony uh tie and i went with um i went with a full windsor all right um sometimes we do things that for for the for the benefit of aesthetics, all right? My favorite knot is a half Windsor, all right? But the full Windsor for this particular look, for this particular ensemble, for the rustic chic, for the English, uh, for, the, for the English countryside aesthetic, a full Windsor to me just was a better look, better overall look, all right? Uh, pocket watch, up high, up high pocket watch the polo blue label uh driving cap and the uh spring gray glen plaid pattern again with orange formidable orange trimming in the glen plaid so you see what you see what we're doing here all right and then the piece of the resistance mm -hmm. the piece de resistance is this double rl hand knit ranch cardigan all right, three quarter length, hand knit ranch cardigan. Look at the details there. You've seen this before on the BTS, but look at the details. All right, uh, ribbed at the uh, at the sleeves. You see the colors, uh, gunmetal gray, burnt orange, a uh, boating khaki tan base. All right, belted. Man, this thing is comfortable. It's cozy. Yeah. Yeah. If I can get if I can get that bank account just to go up a little bit more, just a little bit more. I get in the market on these double RL cardigans, man. I'll start jumping on them left and right because I'm telling you. Um, varsity cardigans, collegiate cardigans. Uh, even like y'all know how much I love cardigans. I think we have done did three, four episodes of cardigans. But man, when it comes to how these feel right here and how they wear, how they look. <sighs> bro, I'm trying to told you. That's my that's myself coming out, bro. I tried to told you. Yeah, these right here. These are official, man. So, um, yeah. God willing, knock on wood, that five mil drop out the sky. Y'all going to see a whole bunch of three quarter length belted double RL cardigans stacked up over here. I'm telling you, I jump on them. And I understand the price. You get what you pay for. Double RL is quality and it's exclusivity. So you're going to get what you pay for. It, you know what I mean? But with that said, fragrance of the ensemble. Fragrance of the ensemble would have been well. It was. It was still a no-brainer. It was still a no-brainer. Fragrance on the, of the ensemble should have been Supreme Oud. I still have yet to replace my empty bottle of Supreme Oud. 
I want to and will replace it because Supreme Oud One is a, is one of the top tier fragrances for me when it comes to the world of Ralph Lauren and when it comes to being a Ralph Lauren guy. It's top tier. And the fact that my, um, you know, I don't have to rely on the same fragrance every day or hell, in some circumstances, I may not even put a fragrance on every day. That said, that bottle of Supreme Oud that I had did last me uh, roughly two years, maybe a little over that. All right. I'm pretty sure it's it probably closer to two and a half. But I still have yet to find reasonably a reasonably priced uh, unopened bottle again. The dope fiends on eBay just like they looking they looking to retire off of selling stuff. And I just it, it, I just can't be a party to it. But since the Supreme Oud was not an option, you would think maybe Supreme Leather, maybe Supreme Cashmere. Yes and no, they can work. But the Polo Intense, the newer version of Green works perfectly for all four ensembles. All right. The woodsiness. The outdoorsiness, the strength, uh, the a, a little bit of um, what I like to call, and I don't know exactly what, I'd have to look it up to see, but there's a bourbony smell. There's a bourbony smell to, um, to Polo Intense Green, all right? So it works perfectly. It works perfectly for all four ensembles. It's a long lasting. And of course, with anything green, whether it's the original Polo Green or the or this new version, even though this new version is a uh, a a the smaller brother, in the sense of the strength, because you know Polo Green, you got to you got to be steady with the hand with Polo Green, because if you overdo it with Polo Green, you're gonna be talked about and in, in a negative light more than likely. Um, but this is the same scenario, you know. Just be careful. But understand it's a light, it's a lighter weight version. So 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 find your find your happy place when it comes to how much of this you use. But I guarantee you, head turner, if you didn't already know. And if you didn't already know, then that means you hadn't checked my review for it and shame on you. All right. Uh no, I didn't do a review on this, did I? I know I did one on Rouse Club. I don't know if I did one on Pop. I might have. I had to look and see myself. I ain't done so much for y'all for the free. I done so much start putting this on a paywall no i'm kidding but um yeah i think i i I have to look i may have done one anyway without any further ado man y'all ready me too southwest p baby let's go so look at how we just went full circle parker what you mean you went full circle i tell you what I mean when I say we went full circle. Episode 133, whatever the last episode was, we talked about or we featured heavy graphic turtleneck sweaters. All right. So we had three rigs plus the ensemble I wore. So that's why this wasn't on that episode because it need to be on this episode so why not put it first it's a, it's a method to the cuckoo this bro it's a method anywho i love this look now one thing i will say about every look except for the one i'm wearing except for the one i'm wearing every look on this on this episode is it serves two purposes all right any of these looks you could wear just to be out and about in your leisure. Or if you got some work to do on the double RL ranch out in Colorado, you can wear these looks for that too. All right. You could actually wear this to work outside. Okay. Now let's keep it a hundred. Back when men were men and women were women, the ensemble I'm wearing, you could also wear to work outside because fl wool flannel pants might have been 30 cent. A waistcoat coat served a purpose, all right? A cardigan sweater over top, pair of shoes. You could still do some work outside in this ensemble. 
But when you fast forward to 2023 and the world is a little bit upside down. And what we're trying to do here is get the world back where on its axis where it's supposed to be. What was paid for these pieces, you wouldn't want to actually go out and chop wood or anything like that. I'm just saying, unless you got it like that. I don't. All right. Anywho, this look, like I said, I love it. It's a beautiful look. It's perfect for uh, you can work outside again or just uh, on, on for your leisure. You know what I mean? Just for your leisure. This is great for running errands during the week. This is great for being out, out on a Saturday or a Sunday. But let's start at the bottom so you can see the entire look. All right. So starting off, we went with and they made a return already. You know, these shoes, these shoes have only been in the arsenal. For what, a month now? Still ain't warm yet, but they've been on they've been on the uh, they've been on the vlog. They've been on Seamless Style twice now, three times if you include the BTS. But I digest. The uh, duck boots by Polo Ralph Lauren. All right. The uh, the green duck boots. Perfect. Uh, perfect. With perfect shape duck boot. OK, definitely competitive with uh, with the bean boot. All right. Uh, I got some cream, some heavy cream wool uh, socks that I'll probably rock with this just to bring out the uh, cream in the uh, turtleneck. But let's scroll up. Slim fit corduroy. College gray. All right. Uh, just a no brainer. A, ni a nice neutral color that complements everything else that's going on. All right. Diamond quilted. Diamond quilted outerwear vest. All right. Just to give us an added layer to uh, protect us from the elements. And uh, we got a herringbone, a herringbone tan or baker's cap, wherever you from, whatever you want to call it. Beautiful wool herringbone cap. And the piece de resistance is this beautiful, chunky, heavy, heavyweight southwestern print turtleneck sweater. All right. And these colors. So when I saw this on the bay, when I saw this on eBay, I just jumped on. It. I just jumped on it. because when something like this catches my eye, it's the way that the colors pop without being uh, drastically flamboyant. And the first thing I saw and what my eyes go to every time I look at this sweater is this shade of blue. All right. This this rugby royal meets aqua blue and has a baby shade of blue, man. It's just it's just gorgeous, bro. That's a gorgeous pop of color. And then all of the other colors that's in the, this in the sweater to me complement this blue. OK, you got some spring gray. You got black. You have wine. You have red. You have navy. You even have a little bit of white in here. All right. And then that the sweater is a cream base. Man, this look is this. This sweater is beautiful, beautiful. All right. And the overall look, the overall aesthetic of this look. It's 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 official. This is official Southwestern. Yeah, we 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 own some here. This next look is really, really dope. All right. This is a really dope look, man. This is a really dope look. Um, when I got this shirt, this shirt was a this shirt was a consolation prize, to be honest. I love the I love the print. I love the southwestern print and the pattern. But I was looking at something a little heavier. Like maybe that. But you know, this is a patchwork and it does have some southwestern print influences in it. But I wanted a southwestern print, but with the blanket weight. All right. And again, man, these these coke heads, they prices on eBay is just I couldn't I couldn't I couldn't justify it here. I could have not bragging, but I could have justified it here. I just couldn't justify it here at the time. But I saw this one. It was like. 87 bucks i got it for 60 i was like all right when i got it though it was surprisingly heavier than i thought now is it blanket weight no but it's definitely an overshirt all right didn't even realize that it had a throat latch that would have told me it was an overshirt more than anything else 
But yeah, I was pleasantly surprised. And then once I put the on, well, I had pieces of the ensemble together all, already in my head before it arrived. But once I put it on the on the rig, I knew I had some. So I actually got another one, totally different pattern, um, but similar in weight and price. I actually got another one on the way. I told y'all, man, I'm all in right now. All right. But this look, I really like this look. It's dope. Um, my, my boy, Zoe, my boy, Zoe, he's a new father. This look kind of, I kind of ended this look or, or, or let me say I polished this look off thinking about having him in mind. All right. New father, Ralph Lauren guy, he's getting back into it. He used to be in it. Then he wasn't. Now he's back. Now he's. He, I think he's mid in his, not to tell your business, Zoe, but I think Zoe is in his mid thirties. So he's looking to elevate grown man style. The, the, the brother has bought some time with me. So I know he's serious about it and he, he's just a solid dude. Um, but I thought about him new father. Like I said, I think his, I think his baby is, I think his, I think his baby is maybe a month old, maybe two months at the oldest. So I thought about him um, when I was a when I had infants and even toddlers. I didn't want to carry no 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 diaper bag, bro. I'm a grown ass man, dog. I don't carry no diaper bag, but I did carry a book bag. And then uh, once I with my youngest with my youngest child, I was I wasn't yet into Ralph Lauren, but I was more into fashion than I had been before, and so. You know, duffels, weekenders, things like that. I kept them. I had a few. All right. Let's start at the bottom, though, so you can see exactly where I'm going with this. All right. Start at the bottom. Went with the uh, low cut bean boots. All right. Low cut bean boots. Reason being because this shirt has a pair of Aztec Navajo Southwestern print socks that go with it. So for anybody, oh, Oh, you're not polo head to toe if you're wearing bean boots. Well, I got polo blue label socks on my feet. So shut the fuck up and mind your business. Because I'm always Ralph Lauren head to toe. All right. Just got some over my toes that ain't Ralph. All right. But anywho, uh, LL bean boots, Aztec socks, Aztec Southwestern print socks, denim. All right, this look screams for denim, but here's what you want to keep in mind. The more distressed and or repaired that your denim that your denim is, the better it's going to suit this look. All right. Now, I have a pair of uh, jeans that are more damaged and repaired than these have a more worn in look than these, but they they're they're kind of themed. They have uh they're damaged. They're heavily damaged, but then they're repaired on the inside with a U.S. Army bag, a U.S. Army like uh, duffel type bag, material, everything. Like it's like they cut one up and repaired it with that. Uh, their denim and supply, but they ju that just the Army part of it just threw me off. It didn't work for me. All right. Uh, but I went with these. I went with these nice fade on them have a worn in look without being dirty or grungy okay uh scroll up we're going to skip over the piece they resist on and go to the shirt that's under all right the blake button down uh cotton shirt all right and we went with a chambray tie all right chambray tie uh a smoking pipe tie bar from the tie bar all right and all of our necessities are in this polo book bag all right navy blue giant p on the back polo book bag trimmed with our uh, leather accessories and, and all all the goods all right and a, and a hue of navy so it's, it's neutral it's not trying to outshine anything and then our piece all right the southwestern print work shirt all right dual pockets functional pockets throat latch is functional all right 
Um, I wish it had elbow patches. That would be great, but it ain't even really necessary here. Uh, I won't take any points off of the shirt for not having elbow patches. Elbow patches would have gave it an, an 11 instead of the nine that I'm giving it. All right. Um, great fit, classic fit. Once you layer it, it's going to give you a similar look as to what you see here. You get it in your size. Don't get it a size up. Get it in your size. If you're going to layer it like this, right? And it's going to work for you. Polish the look off with a pair of uh, Ralph Lauren aviators. All right. If you want to do a cap, any type of any type of hair will work. A beanie will work. A driver will work. If it's me, I'm probably just going to go ahead and throw on a dad cap because this is a dad. This is a fly ass dad look. I call this look har har, cardi har har. I'm going to keep that too. I'm going to keep it. I ain't going to edit, start over, nothing. I'm going to keep it. Y'all need to know sometimes I'm corny. I'm going to keep it. Fuck it. I'm going to keep it. Any hoot. This joint. This is the thing that. All right, let me let me let me let me rewind my thought here. When denim and supply was around and available, I liked it because it was a new option and a different option to get denim and pieces that typically fell under a pricier point if it was by blue label or black label or double rl or purple label, right they would take some influences from some of their luxury designs and recreate it or reinterpret it through denim and supply now we all know the two main reasons denim and supply folded up one denim and supply as far as the market that it was marketed to was not um, was not going to be financially feasible. That market wasn't being reached. All right. The 13 to 27, 28 demo wasn't checking for denim and supply. It wasn't it wasn't advertised to them the way it should have been, in my opinion. OK, um, you can go back and look at some of the print ads and you'll see what I'm talking about. It wasn't advertised to that demographic the way it should have been. All right. And a lot of the stuff that was in denim and supply, like the T-shirts and everything, I could see the I could see the younger the younger kids jumping on it. But everything else, it wasn't it wasn't right. And then one A. It's another casualty of the Stefan Larson era, which get him to go out of here anyway. Right. But I digest this piece. You can, if you can find, if you can find an eBay vendor that's not on Percocet to sell you a denim and supply Southwestern print cardigan at a reasonable price, then you can get a, you can get a lot of stuff accomplished through denim and supply if you are like me trying to upgrade your Southwestern print collection right because there are a lot of pieces there are a lot of pieces of southwestern print under the denim and supply tag again the problem is is that a lot of ebay vendors a lot of ebay vendors are are, are on mad dog 2020 they they mix in mad dog 2020 and cisco and uh and chasing it chasing it with cheap six dollar wine from food line and and popping um popping volumes and oxycodone so they prices is just nuts right but i digest this look you got to see this look from top to bottom right now you're probably just seeing it from here you got to see this look from top to bottom because i'm telling you i feel like i did an amazing job at putting something together that's out of my wheelhouse maybe out of your wheelhouse i don't know I don't know definitely out of my wheelhouse 
but I like it to the point that this is getting rocked sooner than later. All right, but let's start where we normally start, the box. All right, I pulled out the rugby herringbone slippers. All right, excuse me, not herringbone. The uh, houndstooth, I think these are houndstooth. Yeah, the rugby uh, houndstooth slippers. All right, with the olive green, the wine, and the rugby Ralph Lauren initials with the crown on the vamp. All right, I went with those. Sock wise, I'll probably do either a plain pair of socks and wine, or I have a lighter olive than what's on my legs here in on this rig. I may do that just to have different hues of olive from the waist down to match what's on the cardigan. All right, but let's scroll up. I went with a pair of twill jogger cargos. That's right. Twill jogger cargo cargos. They are straight fit borderline slim. So they, you know, if I look at the tag, it might be a slim straight. It might actually say that. But I think when I bought them, they were straight fit. But man, the way they fit that taper to get to the get to the elastic in the jogger. Man, it's just different. It's just different. And I think with this ensemble, it's going to be freaking great once I put this on. All right. Uh, chambray shirt was a must. You know, we did chambray tie on uh, the second rig. But, a sham, you know, you know, a chambray shirt is going to show up on these Southwest P episodes. All right. Uh, chambray shirt, button down collar. All right. We went neckwear, but not typical necktie or bow tie. We went with a bandana tied in the front. Give it that yellow in, in, in color because we wanted a, another pop of color in the ensemble, number one. And then we went with a bandana because we wanted to give it that Western feel, that Southwest, that uh, that that Southwestern feel, you know, that ranch feel. All right. We wanted to give it that ranch feel. And then we started the ensemble, the piece they resist on this cardigan, denim and supply, gorgeous Southwestern print here, man, gorgeous. You can just feel the indigenous people's hands being all over this cardigan, man. It's got a great weight to it. It's definitely not lightweight, but it's also not too heavy. Uh, it's lighter than the, it's lighter than the uh, cardigan that I'm wearing. The orange in this cardigan with the different shades of green, all right, whether it be olive, whether it be uh, pewter, whether it even be a little, there's a little bit of sepia in here, brown, tans, navies, man, the, the colors on this cardigan, the colors on this cardigan are top tier. They popping, they popping. These colors are popping, man. And this ensemble, I think once I put this ensemble on, I can decide what type of headwear, if any, that I'm going to wear. But it may not be any headwear. You may not want to add anything else to this look. This look is fantastic. It's great, again, for going out, you know, uh, out, day date, whatever you want to call it. But you could definitely work on the ranch with this ensemble and be comfortable. Minus the shoes. You might want to change the shoes for some boots unless you want to step in some horse shit with your rugby slippers. That's hard to find. I don't think you want to do that. And that's another episode in the books. In the books. In the books. Southwest P, man. What y'all think? What y'all think, man? We had a total of four different looks. As far as the rigs go, we had a cardigan. We had a turtleneck we had an over shirt all right so we had three completely different looks featuring the soon to be if not already iconic southwestern print navajo aztec print i don't know about y'all but i am a fan i'm now a fan i am now a fan of the southwestern print and I'm going to be honest with you. There might be another Southwestern Southwestern P Southwest P episode before the spring weather breaks. It might be another one. 
because that's how much I'm looking at Southwestern print now. Like I'm on it. I'm on it. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what else to tell you. But the Southwestern print, I'm on it. Now, I think the only thing that I could honestly say, yeah, you, you've OD'd on that, would be varsity. However, I'm never going to be off of varsity either. So when the piece is right, when the money is right, I'm copping varsity. That just is what it is. Like, I don't have a particular stick that I like to stick to. But varsity is, you know, I'm known for it. Right. Um, but, you know, 20 fair isle sweaters later, uh, 20 cricket sweaters later, you know, it happens. Uh, what? 40 rugby shirts later. I mean, that can coincide with varsity, so to speak. But, you know, sometimes as collectors, we get a whiff of some. And we just. We just run with it, man. We just run with it. And I think Southwest. Aztec, Navajo, I think that's the I think that's going to be my lane here for a minute. I got a, quite a few pieces on watch list. I got quite a few pieces in the cart. So you might want to get used to it. Hopefully you're a fan or you're intrigued at least by Southwest print. Because I think you will see it again before the spring breaks and uh, we have to table all of this layering that we love to do so much for these bullshit spring and summer heat waves. Right. But guaranteed, if you don't see Southwest, Southwest uh, print, Southwestern print before, you know, mid to late March. Oh, you're going to see it again by September. You're going to see it again by September, October, because I'm I, I'm telling you now, I'm copying Southwestern print pieces. All right. But get in the comment section. Tell me which ensemble you like the best and why. Tell me why you liked it the best. All right. Hit that like. Hit that subscribe and tell a friend. Because we here. Southwest P. I would throw up a gang sign, but nah, I'm cool. <laughs> Y'all have a good one.